Hello, I am Karina Cat, and this is Final Fantasy XIV Main Scenario Quest Dating Sim. I mean, oops, just main scenario. Anyway, I'm pretty sure the date with Amarok is gonna happen soon. Hey, baby. You wanna be my date? <laughs> Funny you should mention. Hold on. <laughs> Uh, so apparently we get a Amaric minion. His many obligations prevent him from accompanying you on your journeys, but hopefully this dutiful substitute will suffice. Ooh, and a coat. My own friendship with Estinian began some ten years past, shortly after we joined the Temple Knights. I learned his name soon enough, but Estinian barely registered my existence. I was less a fellow recruit and more a shadow which occasionally darkened his path. And so I might have remained, had fate not seen fit to intervene. While out on patrol, our company was set upon by a dragon and we were the only two to survive. The experience forged a bond between us as such life-threatening situations are wont to do. Despite our friendship, he remained an intense and solitary youth, wholly obsessed with claiming vengeance against Nidhogg. Revenge was ever at the forefront of his mind, revenge for the death of his parents, and revenge for his younger brother. I would venture that in Alphano he sees something of his lost sibling, And in the ungentle chidings of Estinian, Alphano has found the elder brother he never had. Truth be told, Estinian's tactless observations have saved me from disaster more than once, and I can well understand Alphano's affection for him. He is a friend for whom I would gladly... Hmm? Lord Commander, your presence is required in the infirmary. Is he? Tell them I'm on my way. Gaia started barking at me, and so I, like, reached down and said, come here, and then she very aggressively like just like threw her head back because I told her to come to me instead <laughs> uh, <laughs> the poor baby so it is over then quickly Exalia we must go to him oh oh Yes. All right, movie time. <gasps> Estinian. Cease your mewling, boy. It grates my ears. F forgive me. When I saw you awaken, I could not... It was such a relief. We feared you might never wake up. Now, now, Astinian. If Master Alphano thought any less of you, you would still be Nidhogg's plaything. Or dead. I, I, it was but a jest. I thank you, Alphano. And you too, warrior of light. Quite how you managed to persuade Hraisvogger to aid in his brood brother's downfall, I cannot imagine. But full glad am I that you did. 
Yet again, you have achieved the impossible. I, for my part, owe you an apology. When last we met, I did willingly loose an arrow at your heart. Can you forgive me? There is naught to forgive, Hammerick. You but acted in defense of Ishgard, as is your duty. Were you any less single-minded about it, I would not follow you into battle, nor trust you at my back. Besides, I had come to the self-same conclusion that I would have to perish for Nidhogg to be stopped. So let us dispense with the hand-wringing. I have heard enough mewling for one day. Oh! The tendrils of Nidhogg's foul presence bound up every fiber of my being, usurping my senses, but I yet retain some trace of awareness. The worm's mind was as a vast and tumultuous sea. Endlessly its black waters churned, his grief and despair at Ratatoska's murder never calming, never receding. Driven by this surging current came wave upon wave of unrelenting rancor. It was the very image of my own heart. There I saw the dark reflection of the hatred I felt after Nidhogg slew my family. When no path remained save vengeance against Dragonkind. Neither one of us had a choice. But I was blessed with something Nidhogg was not. Comrades and teachers to console and admonish me. Had I not had them to gainsay my obsession, it would surely have consumed me as Nidhogg's did him, and we would have been in all respects alike. Though his shade is banished, his spirit scattered upon the sea of clouds, I feel no joy at his passing. Where once I craved vengeance, I now crave rest. Lord Commander, my hunt is at an end. I would lay down the mantle of Azure Dragoon. My friend. He has tired himself with too many words. I doubt not that he will make a full recovery, but he must be allowed some few days of quiet. I too must see my path to its end. Sleep well, my friend. Following the battle with Nidhogg on the steps of faith, Sir Emery called an assembly that he might make his final proclamation as acting head of state.
was there with one decree that the thousand-year rule of the archbishops was ended, paving the way for a new republic. The governance of Ishgard would now be placed in the hands of high and low-born alike, their ranks represented by the newly founded House of Lords and House of Commons. Church was separated from state, the foundation for change had been carefully laid, and the reforms proposed by Ishgard's new government passed into law without incident. His duty done, Emmerich de Borel gladly stepped down from the Archbishop's dais, only to be raised unto the highest seat in the House of Lords. Though he strove at first to refuse this honor, the unexpectedly strident voice of the Count de Durandere left him little choice but to accept. And so it was that the winds of gentle revolution came to stir. Prominent among the many honored guests at Sir Emmerich's investiture were the ambassadors of Dragonkind, a fitting symbol of Ishgard's newfound peace. The people looked on in awe as he soared through the heavens on dragon back. And by their cheers did they hail him an azure dragoon for a new age. Thus were the notes of the Dragon Song rewritten, the din of war giving way to a rising litany of peace and hope.
Well, there you go. I was gazing out at the sea of clouds in an all too rare moment of idleness, when I chanced to behold a certain hero wending her way towards the city on Dragonback. Welcome home, Ixar. Nay, it was no grave matter that moved me to greet you in person. Between you and me, I merely sought res respite from the pressures of office. No sooner do I surrender my role as temporary head of state that I am burdened with a position of more permanent responsibility. I fancy that it echoes in some small measure the way you must feel when your improbable feats of heroism are rewarded with still more impossible challenges. The myth which guided our city for generations lies in tatters. Am I then to be scorned for building upon the system of nobility that I once sought to tear down? And what strange jest is this that places me at its pinnacle? An archbishop's bastard at the head of the House of Lords. Ah, but these are questions for me to answer. It is not in a man's nature to change overnight. This I learned through painful experience. And it was hard lesson. And it was this hard lesson which convinced me to take the path which we now follow. Even as we rebuild the bridge between man and dragon, so must we reimagine Ishgard. One carefully placed stone at a time. We must remember that it is not for us that we lay this groundwork, but for the men and women that our children will become. May their towers rise proudly from the fundament of our legacy. I hear word from Captain Whitescape that Estinian has vanished from his sick room. His willfulness survives undiminished. Should you ever happen upon our unmannerly friend on your travels, pray assure him that I shall keep... Keep Ishgard safe until he deigns to come home. Thank you, Exalia. And please, convey my warmest regards to Master Alphano. Do I not get a date with Emmerich anymore? Did they take that out of the game? <laughs> <laughs> the Dragon Song War has ended. Heaven's Word is over. Stinian is alive and well. Alpha Dose matured. But my date with Emmerich! <laughs> it's all well and good. Sure. Ribbit. Ribbit. Artois Rel lives here, Ribbit. <laughs> Yes, but you've been banished from their house, Ribbit. Let me in! <laughs> There's just like a terrifying frog outside all the time. <laughs> Who's this? Do you want to do her voice? Like, <laughs> Mistress Maors, I, I uh, uh, Sarlette, my name is Sarlette. I'm so, so sorry. I've just begun working here, and I have a thing in my throat. Please don't mind it. And I'm not. You're rather famous, you see. And pray excuse me. Huh. Just go away, Sarlette. Just look away and pretend that you're not here. I had my spear at the ready, Mistress Moors, and I am proud to say that my hand is only troubled ever so slightly. Praise Halone, you have returned to us, and that you've imprisoned my evil twin. <laughs> I was to Oh. I was about to say, he has the same face as the... The the priest dude. 
Yeah. That we... <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's dead. You've saved the day again, Exalia. Not that I ever doubted you would. You spoke with Sir Emmerich. I do not envy him his new position. Ishgard has chosen a new road, but one littered with the detritus of a thousand years of broken faith. Detritus? 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 I forget. No idea. Her people... I'll look that up too in here in a minute. Yet though her people may stumble from time to time, I know of none better than Sir Emmerich to lead the march of progress. As for us, there remains the small matter of ushering in a new dawn in the shadow of inscrutable Asian machinations and a seeming, seemingly endless procession of primals. But we too must walk our chosen path, no matter how treacherous of the footing. In the wake of Ishgard's governmental reform, new airship routes have been sanctioned. You may now travel to selection distant locales from the landing in Ishgard. I have found them. Who is that? It's one of the warriors of darkness. That's what I thought, but I didn't... I didn't think that he had... Uh... Black armor. Nope, I guess so. Okay. Oh, his name changed too. Thank you, Blood. Nay, you need not remain there. We shall rendezvous at the usual place. All is proceeding as expected, Tyler. Aye, there is not to concern us, aside from one overly curious mouse. Shit. Oh, that's great. This way. <gasps> Alphano, how did you get there? Him again. It is of no moment. They will play their part, and we will play ours. Yeah, I was about to say, Thinker kind of just showed up at Ishgard with me, helped me out a little bit, and then just kind of dipped. Mm-hmm. Oh. And thus did Grey Mist give way to Azure Skies. Man and Dragon rise above voices joined in song, but beneath shrouded boughs, beyond the scopes of light, shadow stirs. <laughs> I can't read! And it is bows, yes. Did I get any? Actually, actually, I think it might be both. <gasps> the dragon song. Bows, bows. Mm -hmm. Now I got nothing important. Ribbit, ribbit. Remember me, Artorel's leg. We'll <laughs> always have Falcon's nest. Oh, <laughs> Nothing the popularity of other clockwork leaders, the... Or noting, sorry. Noting the popularity popularity of other clockwork leaders, the Temple Knights attempted to make their own... One of their own beloved commander. The face was so far removed from the true Amorik's handsome... <laughs> main... Main... Mien... However, that one of the knight's wives volunteered to sew a new one from scratch. 
You got it all wrong! Give it to me. I'll make him handsome. What are you saying? A divided what? A divided Ishgard cannot stand. Or will not stand. A divided Ishgard will not survive. Oh, look at him. <laughs> He's so tiny. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Hang on. He needs a famous quote to randomly say all the time. What do we got? Uh, I don't... I don't know. What does he say? For Ishgard. Lucia means nothing to me. <laughs> For Ishgard. <laughs> oh, it's so cute. Oh yeah, he has his, his he has his little sword. That's adorable. The amount of details they put into making miniaturized versions of people is great. <laughs> oh, there's my date. I mean, what? Mr. Small Oz, Mr. Small Oz, you are come at the most excellent time. An invitation from a truly preeminent personage was delivered to the manor about a short while ago. Would that you had been present to receive it, but in any event. Sir Emmerich de Burrell, Lord Speaker of the House of Lords, Lord Commander of the Temple Knights, and Viscount of House Burrell, cordially invites Mistress Moors to dine with him at his estate. You seem surprised. The messenger assured me that his lord had broached the subject with you at an earlier date, when the arrangements for the peace conference were still being finalized. Of course, the intervening moons afforded little opportunity for leisure. But with the happy advent of peace, tis plain the Lord Commander sees no further cause to delay. What say you? Oh, I guess, to be honest, I'd rather not. Who you think? I, I should be glad to accept. I would, but I haven't the foggiest idea what to wear. Any thoughts? Oh yeah, that super ugly coat that they just gave you. Wear that. I think he's wearing the same thing. Who? <laughs> <So. laughs> Emmerich? Yep. No, he's not. Yes. He has like oh, a okay. frilly, like, frilly, at least from that picture with the quest. Okay, I thought it was the same. <laughs> no. I should be glad to accept. Yeah. Why wouldn't I? I don't know why I was confused when he asked me originally. Indeed, who would not? You'll forgive me if I seem envious. Um, uh, I'll have to make do with the, the wind up. That's oh my uh, god. <laughs> Does everyone in Ishgard just love Amaric? <laughs> they at the very least love his face, apparently. You have a very pretty face, my lord. Thank you. I, I, I grew it myself. I shall send word of your acceptance to Borel Manor at once. When you are ready, pray report to the Astrologicum. They will have someone escort you the rest of the way. You lucky bastard. Oh, hi, Zared. How's it going? Hi. Uh, you, uh, you're going to see Emmerich. Mm hmm In his home. Mm-hmm. At night. Is it night? At, at, mm, uh, over dinner? Was it? <laughs> I don't. I don't actually know. I wasn't paying attention. I was a little distracted. Oh yeah, me my <laughs> me <and> my little friend. <laughs> <sighs> Enjoy yourself, Miss Excelia. Mm -hmm. I. I have business to attend to. <clears throat> and I have a date. Is he crying? Oh no.
Gotta get to my date. <laughs> Do I wear new clothes? No, I'm pretty sure they're just gonna make me wear that stupid, ugly... <laughs> oh, this is where he lives, huh? I'm gonna walk right on in, buddy. Damn it. Hello, do you also have the same face as the guy we threw off the buildings? <laughs> <laughs> Greetings and well met, Mistress Maorms. Once again, you have my thanks for killing my evil triplet. <laughs> uh, uh, fraternal. I have the honor and the privilege to serve as head steward of House Moral. Though, admittedly, our staff is somewhat smaller than those of other noble families, being countable on one hand. <clears throat> My lord will be overjoyed to hear that you have accepted his invitation. As you will soon see, we have spared no expense. I dare say a woman of action such as yourself enjoys nary a moment's respite. Aye, the battlefield beckons even now, I am sure, but for this day we bid you lay down your burdens and raise a glass to peace and prosperity. Wait, did it just throw me right in there? Wait, I wasn't ready yet! My outfit! Oh, no. I thought... I, oh, I wasn't going to wear my own outfit! <laughs> Wait, no! Let me change! Nah! I thought it was going to make me eat a... Sp or eat? What? Food? <laughs> to think the Mughals would prove such harsh taskmasters. <laughs> Forgive me. I did not know you had suffered so in your quest for the horn. All work and no play. I must say, your spirited accounts always come as a welcome change from the arid reports which fill my days. I wasn't ready for this! Are we getting a stronger stuff, Amprick? I believe he offered wine and you both took tea. Though I have lived Boom. in these lands my entire life, to hear you speak of them, there is much and more I have yet to see. Truly, yours was a marvelous journey. <laughs> Why not join me on the next? Wink, wink. As friends, clearly. <laughs> well, truth be told, when I think back on the sweeping vistas of the churning mists, I do feel some slight pangs of wanderlust. Alas, much as I would like to accept your invitation, I fear my present duties with the House of Lords demand my undivided attention. Someday, perhaps. By your deeds, you have helped us to lay the foundation for lasting reform. The formation of the Republic is but the beginning, for it is not only our system of governance which must needs change. We, the people, must learn to let go of our hatreds and rise above our bloody past. I only pray that I live long enough to see us achieve some measure of success, that I might know the lost did not die in vain. I can still see you there on the steps of faith, striding fearlessly towards the worm. If you could do that, who are we to balk at the challenges ahead? The question of how best to strengthen ties with the other great nations of Eorzea has been debated at length in the Lords and Commons of late. 
As you may imagine, maintaining stability during this period of historic upheaval is our paramount concern. Nevertheless, we are greatly indebted to the Alliance for their support during the Grand Melee, and it would be remiss of us not to repay their faith in kind. Of course, we owe you the greatest debt of all, and it is my hope that in extending our support to you and the Scions, we might also express our gratitude to our neighbors, nay, our fellow Eorzeans, whom we pray you will continue to protect. The Lords and Commons agree on very little, but not a soul in either house begrudges your order this offer of patronage. For all you have done and will do, we thank you. May I ask a personal question? The answer is yes. Now that the dust has settled, no. what will you do? Not as a scion, <laughs> I mean, but... What do you want for yourself? I choose not to answer these deep personal questions because... Uh... Nobody's ever given me the time to, act, to, to actually just answer. Lord this. Commander, so, pray for the interruption. God damn it! News from House Fortone. An urgent message for the Warrior of Light. I was instructed to deliver it without delay. Master Thancred returned to the manor a short time ago, bearing an injured maiden. Master Leveilleur and Mistress Tataru are tending to her wounds, but they like not her chances. Respectfully, my lord, they have requested the Warrior of Light's immediate presence. You must go to them, my friend, and I shall go with you. For every ending marks a new beginning. Ignore from mind tragedy that box and sacrifice, we rise to greet a new dawn, as did she. Also, I don't know. Only to be drawn onto another battlefield, another cause, as if by fate. Yeah, I don't recognize that voice. Okay, I'm a little upset that the date went that way. Which part? Uh, mostly the fact that I, uh, I, I thought it made me wear that outfit. So I was just expecting to wear the outfit. Oh, good. And then I didn't. Sorry, I, didn't. <laughs> sorry, I, I should have remembered. You did that on purpose. No, uh, I debated it, but no. There are two alpha no's. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> alpha no, another alpha no. <laughs> Is that... Alize, Alphino's twin sister. She ran afoul of the Warriors of Darkness. I had been tracking them since the ceremony at Falcon's Nest. Little did I know I was not the only one. Evidently, she had learned of their activities and attempted to shadow them on her own. Poorly. I rescued her in the Twelves Wood, and together we fled north. But though I made every effort to cover our tracks, they caught up with us on the Ishgardian border. 
and in the ensuing struggle, Elysee took an arrow to the shoulder. It was only after we had made good our escape that I realized it was poisoned. Thank you for coming so quickly. And you, Sir Emmerich. Think nothing of it. How is she? We have done all we can for now. Although the immediate danger has passed, the poison yet lingers in her blood. We came to Eorzea together, hoping to bring salvation to the realm our grandfather gave his life to protect. But when confronted with the bitter realities of its politics and its petty powermongers, she was driven to anger and to doubt. She refused to become embroiled in what she termed Eorzea's squabbles and distance herself from the Scions. Though she remained hopeful of a brighter future, she would walk her own path. Would that it had not been so perilous. For all our differences, she's as dedicated as any scion to the salvation of Eorzea. But more than that, she is my sister. To be reunited with her, only to lose her forever. Gods, even to speak the words. Take heart, Master Alphino. She will be attended by our most skilled Chirurgians. Bear Mistress Leveilleur to the infirmary at once. Apprise Captain Whitecape of the situation and inform him that she is to be treated as my personal charge. W wait, don't go. Please, come closer. The warriors of darkness are in league with the Asians. Slaughtering the primals is but the first step in their plan. They make for Zelvatol to bring about Garuda's summoning and to kill her. You must... you must stop them. I... I shall inform the others at once. Master Thancred, I would ask that you accompany Mistress Leveilleur to the infirmary. Your knowledge of her injuries may well prove useful in determining her treatment. Of course. However much we may change and grow apart, some bonds are unbreakable. Though the fates afforded us the time to Though the fates afforded us the time to share our long delayed drink, it would seem the rest of my wine cellar will have to wait. As I am constantly reminded, there is no rest for the righteous. Also, my man servant said something about a cat boy outside. Oh never mind. Oh no. no first off, that's racist. <laughs> Sorry, something about a Miko Tay. <laughs> surely, surely they won't let her. <sighs> yes, yes, I know. We must trust in Captain Whitecape and his Chirurgians. Did they not bring Asinian back from the very brink of death? I am uncomfortably reminded of how he mocked me for praying at his bedside for days on end. 
What say you, my friend? Shall we turn our attention to a matter whose conclusion we yet have the power to influence? I ain't taking your food. I take your money. Is there somebody just posing over there? That is a great G pose spot. Oh, I know. That's one we've used before. Yeah. Uh, is the quest still inside? Yeah, it is. I was looking for Zarin. Oh. <laughs> but alas. I Welcome, guess... Mrs. Wars. Let yeah. me wait. Well, that's actually where I'm going to have to end it, so there's that. Well, that was fun. I gotta wind up Amaric. That's for later. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Isn't that what everybody thinks when they get these things? <laughs> Why am I getting this? <laughs> I have a pillow with a minute. Oh, dear God. Anyway, I'm going to leave now. So until next time on Final Fantasy XIV Men Scenario Quest playthrough. Yes, I, I did that way too late. It's fine. It's fine. Just blank stare all around. All right. Bye-bye.